All right, we're going to get started because we have a lot to talk about. Um, so we're going to monopolize on a few minutes early. Um, please feel free to just come on in. Um, we got up at really early this morning and we left at 4.30. So we've had a lot of coffee and uh, we're both a little uh, energetic, clay more so to begin with. So that coupled with our morning, you are in for it. Grab some floor. Grab it. All right, so the plan for the day is we really have a lot of information to share with you and we want everybody to walk away with something. So I just, I always like to say what we're going to talk about because there's always so many sessions that you want to go to and it's the worst thing when you spend an hour in a session and it wasn't what you thought it would be. So this is what today is going to be. We're going to talk about our implementation and for those of you that are considering iPod implementations but want to see the big picture, we're going to share that big picture with you in hopes that it will save some of your districts the the um, troubles that we went through. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about our implementation. Then Clay is going to, he is a fantastic um, teacher and has really uh, utilized these devices well. So he's going to take you through some simulations as to how these can actually be used in a classroom. We were really going to make this hands-on and we were going to have you all be students. But then when we did the math that there was over 800 people coming in only 12 sessions at a time, we kind of figured that our 30 iPod touches wouldn't go very far. Morning, so we kind of switched it up at the last minute. Morning, John, and then we're going to talk nice about to some you. specific the apps that basketball. hopefully uh, cover oh, okay. a wide range of content areas empty. so you can all leave with something. So with that said, my name is Amy Allman. Clay and I are from the Pulaski School here. District just outside of Green Bay. I um, am the instructional technology coordinator, so I have the advantage of working with all staff in the district and, and Clay and My I. My name is Clay Reisler. I'm an eighth grade teacher in uh, the middle school. And I got to tell you, uh, I'm talking to my son, he's 10 years old, and I tell him I'm going down to the Kalahari in Wisconsin Dells, and he goes, Did you bring your suit? And I said, No, no, I'm not going to stand up there in front of him and, and ask for you to look at me in a suit. But I will tell you that we're going to give you a lot of stuff, and my biggest thing is you're going to learn a ton, implement some, do something if you can. So don't be overwhelmed, just take what you can. Interrupt us at any time with questions, otherwise we'll just keep rolling. All right. Just pretty. All right. So as I mentioned, we are from Pulaski. We have about, just to kind of get a feel for who we are and where we come from, we have almost 4,000 students, K-12. We have seven buildings. And like I mentioned, we're just outside of Green Bay. What led us to the iPod Touches is, as many of your school districts are searching for ways to get technology in the hands of students, ways to get them to access this wealth of information that is out there. Um, we also have a, a really strong vision for 21st century learning, and, and really it was our vision that brought us to these iPod Touches a few years ago. Um, since then, there are many other devices that have hit the market, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those too and, and what our plans for in utilizing all of these, but really what led us to the iPod Touches is we wanted to get something in the hands of students. Um, the way that school budgets are right now without some very um, clever thinking and cutbacks, we aren't able to provide every student with a device. Um, but through, the, through iPod Touches, we're able to get a lot closer because of the cost. So we wanted something that would give them that access. We wanted something that was very mobile. We wanted something that was engaging and could transform learning. And I think you will see today that this device can do all of those things. How we started. We started at a very, very, very small scale. We had an opportunity to write a grant and um, for a big six unit, and Clay wrote a grant. And from that grant, we were able to get, I know, hold it, hold it, are you ready? Wait for it, six iPod touches. Yes. So that is how we started. In, in a classroom of 32. So. Yes. So he was able to utilize his six iPod touches, and he had five or six computers in his classroom, and he utilized them all as tools. Um, we started to collect some data. We started to see how they would work. Are these, are these really a good tool? Are they, are they really engaging to kids? Are they really helping you to teach your content? And we found the answer was yes. So we expanded. We started with 30 iPod Touches, 
and they were used for about 105 math students in the seventh grade level, and it was managed by one person, and that would be Clay. He had the cart in his room, he had them all the time. We also tried some different things. We um, had a cart of 25 at one of our elementary schools. We used that, those in grades three through five for 150 students, but it was managed or used by 10 teachers, managed by one person, and that was our library media specialist. So she was in charge of the downloading and all of that. The teachers would um, bring her apps or she would suggest apps to them, and so she kind of managed the cart in working in collaboration with teachers. And then our third thing that we eventually rolled out, we, we started with those first two carts. Then through the course of the next six to eight months, we started seeing great possibilities for special needs students. And so we, we did a couple different things. We did at our high school, we, we had a, a pot of 10 that was used for 30 students and, and two teachers. And then we also had 35 devices that were used K-12 um, by about 35 teachers. And those 35 teachers all used a, a central library of apps and they just used their devices with the students that, that needed them at the time for the apps that they found. So we really tried to do a variety of different implementations um, so that we could study all of them and see the, the direction we wanted to go beyond that. This is our setup. So this is what a cart looks like. We went with the Bretford cart, and we'll talk about some other options, and, and, and some of you might have other things to share as well, um, but it's the Bretford Power Sync cart. Um, you can see there are two drawers. There's the possibility to house 20 um, devices in each drawer. Uh, we have cases on every iPod Touch. We have screen covers and headphones. We have little tack mics, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We really tried hard to make it work with a PC. We are a 100% PC district, and we had a lot of um, roadblocks in the the thinking, uh, we weren't able to, to get it to sync 20 devices at a time like we can with the MacBook. So we did add that MacBook, and then we have a document camera. You want to say anything about that, Clay? Uh, that's basically my classroom right there, and I will show you exactly how I utilize it. Um, it, it. You really need more than just the iPods if you truly want to incorporate them, and that's something you need. We're, we're trying to let you be upfront about it. It's nice to have all those things. This is just what a drawer looks like when you pull out one of those drawers. Um, the nice thing about the cart is this piece right here is flexible. So this is just the actual cord that comes with it. It's built into the cart, so it's flexible. I'll so show you some other ones that we actually tried and really um, did not like. Remember those six that we told you about? This was it right here. She went to Fleet Farm. She bought herself a nice little yellow thing, drilled a hole in it. There's a power cord in the bottom of there. And uh, I think she might have nine, this isn't our exact setup, but this was it, and it was, it was funky. I was going to work. I mean, it was, but it, worked. But it can be done. So if, if you have six in your classroom, you can do it. Do whatever yeah. you have to do. We just got a four port USB hub, and then we were able to sync four at a time. You can get six or eight port USB hubs too to sync those all at one time. You'll so notice a, uh, a PC up there. PC will sync a small amount of them, but when you go to the cart and you're syncing 20 to 30, which I do, the MacBook is the only way to go. Yeah, I think you can get eight. Please, if anybody's able to get more with a PC, let us know, but I think you could probably sync about eight at a time that can handle that. This is, uh, we, we tried some other lower cost solutions. This was still pretty expensive. I think this was like seven to $900. And the iPod touches just sit in here and that's how they charge and sync. But the thing that we really didn't like about those is how I mentioned the flexible piece. This is, you just have to stick the iPod touch in there and I could see students eight hours a day, really that being a big issue. So we returned it. There are other options. Bretford, instead of a cart, has a little, uh, looks like a briefcase that locks. It is very nice. I would definitely look at that option. Just to give you an idea of cost, because that's, that's where we are, <laughs> um, this is kind of our budget for our carts. The, the yellow is um, a necessity, and then the other things are just very nice to have. Um, I'm not going to talk much about that, but in case you want to see the, car, the costs, we get our screen protectors and our cases and all of that from Overstock, very inexpensively. So you're looking at about, about 8,000 bucks for a card of 30? Yes. 
I do want to. And there's cheaper options. I mean, if you, the cart is the big expense. It's 2400 So there are cheap, cheaper options out there. Because many of you are, are new to this, and, and if you know this already, then please forgive me. I looked into getting this VG adapter from, from your iPod to a digital output source, and I thought this would be great. It's, what, 40 30 bucks, something like that. The only thing this does is YouTube videos and pictures from your iPod, so it will not give you a screenshot. So if you're in the part of uh, implementing this, this is not something you may want. Uh, while it does some things, it doesn't do a lot. So that's, that's down here. The document camera is definitely the best. You want to quickly talk about that document camera? Sure, absolutely. We were in the picture that you saw, the black document camera. We were spending $600 on document cameras, and they had great features of which we probably used 10% of. So somewhere along the line, I don't even know where, somehow we stumbled across these. They're IPVO cameras, and they, they couple as a webcam. So you turn it, it becomes a webcam with very good clarity across the whole classroom of students. And then you turn it here, it becomes a dot cam with an adjustable arm. You can even pop this off, and there's a laptop clip if you want. Seven dollars IPVO I P E V O they're awesome you'll see them in use today when we get to the apps um, for microphones we buy these little tac mics I'm not a hundred percent sure they're the best thing out there uh, they cost like a dollar fifty they just plug in to the bottom of an iPod touch and it becomes a microphone the only um, limitation is you can there are only two programs that these will work with two apps Easy Recorder and... Voice Memo? Nope, they don't work with a Voice Memo. Another one. But, but they, they're a fifty, and they, they do the job. Easy Recorder allows students to create podcasts and, and save um, audio files. So they and, do the job. And because we're trying to help you understand what are all the things you need to implement, these are also Fleet Farm, and they are a way to organize your headphones. I have seen somebody who created a pegboard. They put little hooks on them and they hang the, head, the headphones. We're really trying to work on, and we have not figured it out, how to not have these things go into everybody's ear. Because if you've seen eighth graders' ears, I mean, <laughs> this isn't something you're going to want to do. Now, the thing that we're trying to do, and maybe if you have the answer, I'm excited to hear from you, but you don't yet, so just wait. Um, we're looking for the headphone that comes out here plus the microphone. What, what do you have? Sure. Yep. And there are some kids that do that, but we're just telling you this is what we did. I, I like that idea. What doesn't work at an elementary level? Having to buy their own. They play with them and break them in. We did it at our elementary where it's on the school supply list. Okay. Okay. So you can work that out in your own districts, um, but again, I think it would be best to have, have the headphones with the built-in mic. The, the issue for that is if, this, if it's not an all-in-one, the students have to plug in the mic, do their recording, then unplug the mic, then plug in the headphones, put them on to listen to their recording. So it'd be really nice if it was all built-in, built-in one. Classroom management. A couple of things about classroom management. It's really important that you get it figured out. And if you are a teacher, Awesome. Share it with everybody else. If you're an administrator and somebody comes up and you say, I'd really like to have iPod Touches, ask them for the plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to be efficient. A couple of things. Establish rule and motivate for appropriate use. Kids know that I can get whatever they put on there. Okay? Whatever goes on there, we have a record through our network of what's going on. Secondly, number devices and assign students a device. I'll show you how that works. We have every single iPod Touch that has it engraved on the back, and then you'll notice when you click the screen, there's a screenshot of our school logo, and it says the name of the iPod Touch. That's what I'm talking about right there. So this isn't our school logo, but you have that, and it's really easy to sync all those pictures and put them up there. That helps with motivation, or excuse me, helps with management. I've also told the students, that's what it looks like right there. I've also told the students, you mess with that right there, and this isn't yours anymore. It's not hard. And I have had no problems so far. The other thing, every kid for every class has their own number. So I have a list. Here is your number for this classroom. And I'm just telling you this. I had a student go get an internet web picture. It wasn't horrible, but it certainly wasn't appropriate. You can take this, put it into a regular computer, 
and you can find out the, the timestamp of the picture. So then I was e easily able to go back to exactly when that was being used. I know who was being used it. They're not using it anymore. It's not hard. So that is our list. Every kid, again, has a different one, and, and there you go. So very important that you get that figured out. And the Bedford cart, you need to number them. You need to put a little sticker on them. You want to go back to the other classroom management stuff? A couple other things. At the end of the hour, load one drawer at a time. You're going to kind of see that. Things were going well in my classroom yesterday. I took some raw uh, video of it. You're going to see it. I say, all right, top drawer, come on up. They put them in there, and they go uh, back to their, uh, to their next class. Here's the thing. You don't have to plug these in every single hour or unplug them. The people that are using them first, they unplug them, and then the last hour, they plug them in. The battery lives are phenomenal. And that, to me, I've had netbooks. They're OK, and I'm not saying they're bad, but these are great. They will last forever. So you don't have to plug them in and out. And then it's really important, not one student is released from my classroom until all of them are accounted for. And I've had these all of 2009, now into 2010 class uh, uh, school year. I've not lost one. Nothing's happened to them. And so it's really important. You can't release them till, till you have everyone accounted for. And finally, check card at the end of each use, which I just got done talking about. Sorry at about our that. elementary school, we did have one that is lost. And when I talked with the library media specialist about it, she said, I'm finding that I have to just, we just have to make it um, aware, make teachers aware of the fact that they have to remember to do that last step because that's how that happened. Just was, you know how it is, it's the end of the hour and oh my gosh, I gotta get you kids off to your next class and, and just have to take that time, try to finish two minutes early. And, and the nice thing that Clay does is he doesn't have them hook the iPod into the cord every hour, he just has them set them in the drawer. So literally it's just to go up to the cart, drop and go. So it doesn't take a long time. Our findings. This was very important to us. We didn't want to just have the technology for the technology's sake. We really um, wanted to make sure that they were having an impact on student learning and student engagement, and we absolutely found that. So there were many changes in instruction. Uh, they are very, very engaging. Clay, you probably want to step in on some of this stuff. Um, engaging is an understatement. Um, I will show you, and we, we got to get to the other stuff that we're going to get to, and, and you'll see it, but they are locked in, and I can get them unlocked, and I can get them locked back in, and the biggest thing you need to understand is it's not iPod touch time, okay, so 10 minutes before class, 10 minutes after, it is a tool like a pencil that you're picking up and using, and now I don't need that tool, and now I put it away, and that's the biggest thing, change of instruction for me. Uh, really try to get them to find a resource. Our biggest thing is think, question, create. Think about the problem, question where can I get it? Is it an app? Is it a web-based thing? Whatever on the iPod Touch and create finally. What can I have as my answer? What can I give as a response or a picture or so forth? On the right-hand side, this is just some data that we collected. We collected various forms of data, but this is one thing I'll explain to you is we, we use map testing, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, but we took um, the, the iPod Touch classroom and we compared it with two other classrooms, same content area. Um, and you can see that in the iPod Touch classroom, 75% of the students met or exceeded their target growth, where in the other two it was 65 and 46. There are other factors. We realize there are other factors that, that could pertain to this other than the iPod Touches. If you are in need of some data to bring this back to your school districts, I'd be willing to share this with you. I also have some really great um, data from Canby School District who has extensively studied the use of their iPod Touches and they break this, they aggregate this information down to um, different uh, segments of the population and to um, poverty students and just it's great so if you are in need of that I have it with me today I'll be glad to email it right out to you I think one thing is that it really puts the learning in the hands of the students um, and it's a multiple use device we were just having a discussion earlier today about clickers and how great clickers are clickers are great but clickers do one thing whereas if you invested your money in something like this you have an iResponse app or an eClicker app that essentially does everything those clickers do plus you've got access to the web plus Plus you've got access to music and podcasts and other apps all on this one device. So while it might cost a little bit more, your return on investment is so much greater because of all the different things this device does. I can't emphasize en enough about that. The cost efficiency is, is just huge and it also puts 
the learning in my hand because if I find an app, I can go get it. I don't have to call the tech department and then have them come and load it on my desktop, which they're busy and then it's whatever. There are a few changes that are going on with the volume purchasing order, but it still is something that's a positive. There's my biggest question about, yep. about using the iPods right now. How are you handling the, the application of apps, the downloading of apps, and probably, I guess I'll say, the, the, the limitations uh, when they are in the kids' hands of, of uh, I'll say the word abuse. Yeah. Well, here's, here's what I've been dealing with it. Yep couple of things. I go to my MacBook, I find an iPod Touch app or an iPad app, and I'm throwing it on there. I sync it, and I'm done. As far as abuse, I'm not sure what you're saying on that. Kids have no access to the iTunes store. It's all password protected, so they're not going to get any. Um, yesterday, a kid was dinking around with it, and you don't do that in my classroom, and he didn't have that anymore. And the word gets out pretty quick, because they want them. It's like taking a cell phone away from a kid. So is that the abuse that you're talking about? Perhaps, yes. Yeah. The access to the iTunes, a re reminder about that. Yeah, there's, there's no way they can get to it, because they don't know my password. And if you're interested in learning more about licensing, we'll talk about that at the end or afterwards. Currently, we're still using the gift card because we're still working on the process of switching over to the volume pricing. The volume pricing is, is detrimental to schools, and it also it doesn't cover everything because right now you can use volume um, purchasing through Apple for apps. But what about music and what about podcasts and what about books? Right now, that's not covered. So we're, we're trying to get all that worked out before we make the transition right now. Limitations and solutions. We wanted to just point out there are limitations, but we've, we've in most of these cases, been able to find a workaround or make, turn it into a solution. So one of the things that you might hear about these devices, whether it be the iPod or the iPad, is that you can't word process. And you absolutely can word process, but you have to start thinking differently about how you create documents. It's not like Microsoft Word where you can just open it up and save it. But what you can do is there are many, many applications that allow you to create presentations, Word documents, spreadsheets. And then you create them, and then you can either email them to someone else, or you use cloud-based computing like Google Docs, Google Apps, where it does, you don't have that need to print or have that need to, because everything is stored on the web. It's all stored in the cloud. So you just save it. If you then need to print it, you go to a computer to print it if you need to. <laughs> Men, you never interrupt a woman. You understand me on that? That's polite. Right. Thank so, you. Three weeks ago, Google said, yep, you now can have word processing. You used to only be able to have a spreadsheet, like an Excel file, on an iPod, but now you can have word processing. It has made my life so much easier. In fact, today at 1230, kids are working on a Google Doc that I sent them. It's not hard. It really isn't hard. So. Uh, that's gone right there. The other one is Flash. You've probably Hang heard on. of that. Can I say one other thing about that? Sure. I have an app, just to give you an idea of how it works. I have an app called um, docs to go and um, I can save files on here, so then I can just pull them up on here as I'm presenting or as I need them in class, but then I can also, through that same app, save things to Google Apps. So it does actually still allow you to save in, in the way that we're used to thinking about saving. So I just wanted to give you that example because I think that is misunderstood. A couple other things as far as Flash. iPod Touches don't do Flash. And if you know what Flash is, it's a way to produce video and interactive. There is a, uh, we're trying to get around that. There is a, an app called Skyfire. It's not perfect as it does take care of watching some video on the web. It's a two ninety nine app. And it will not still allow for that interactive flash games, uh, GeoGebra, if you've ever heard of that. That doesn't work on there, but it is an option. As far as the on-screen keyboard, uh, the on-screen keyboard is quite small. It does have the landscape where you tilt it and you can go here. That's all good. The iPads are getting better. I have not had one kid complain about the actual keyboard. The screen is a little bit challenging. Uh, they're not real happy with the fact that the screen is here, but it's better than what you had before, which was nothing. So uh, we're working around that. But there's the iPad uh, thing, in case you've never seen it before. Um, it, it's, that one's very cool. And that's there. And if you turn it sideways, you get a little bit longer one. You might have to flip it up. There you go. So that's the keyboard. If, you, if you, you can purchase external keyboards. They cost $80. They make them wireless as well as non-wireless. And you just take your iPad 
and you just put it right into the dock and then you have a it's an actual keyboard that you can use. We've kind of run through already uh, the new licensing model we're, we're working with that and that's really not our presentation but advantages battery life instant use various portable weight and space cost I can't find one thing that's bad about them. We were talking about that on the way down here. I, I really can't. Now that there's cloud-based uh, computing, I, I can't find anything. So, and the I'm nice not an expert, but. The nice thing is you think about your classroom, you, you turn on a computer, you wait for it to oh. get to the login screen, you log in, you wait for it to get to the desktop, you put this, you turn it on, it's there. You start using it immediately. You can gain at the beginning of a class period and at the end of the class period in log off, you could gain at least five. Real quickly on that, minutes. we shut ours hard shut down with the holding of the bat so, or the button so that the red bar comes across once a week, and that's usually on Friday, my last class period. That just allows it to shut down, kind of rejuvenate itself. Otherwise, we leave them on. I've not found any problems. We were talking about this. How long are these things going to last? I had the six of them since uh, March of 2008. Something that knows March of 2009, whatever. I can't remember, but it's been a while, and uh, I hope they continue to last. Yeah. One last thing on that is it's nice when I go into Clay's classroom because you know how students have binders and books and notebooks and all kinds of stuff and they have these really little desks. Well, the nice thing is it's not a computer that takes up that whole desk. So they can still have all their things out and these little devices in their hand or just lay them on their desk. And so I think space is a, is a big issue as well. Attributions of success. And I broke this down into a few things. What, what, made, what is making this successful for us is, is that we really have a district vision for 21st century learning. We really have a commitment level of the teachers. As you will see by the end of today, you're going to leave here like, wow, I wish I could be like Clay. He invests. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> Let me take that back. No. Um, he invests a lot of time and effort into this and so do all of our teachers who use them because we know that they are best for students and they are constantly searching for new strategies and new apps and new resources just like all of you in this room do. Clay talked about teacher controls it. Um, one thing is we really allowed the staff to use them ahead of time so when we knew we were putting them at Hillcrest Elementary grades three through five the summer before we got an iPod touch for every teacher and we said download games. Let, you know, let your kids play games and let them teach you. You, you get apps that you like because there really is a comfort level in understanding the device. And so we, want, we thought that was very important. Um, our staff does a really good job of using each other as resources. When I talk about our speech and, and language and our special education staff, that they share a lot of these devices and they share a library. <coughs> So like you might download two apps and then you download five and you didn't know he downloaded those. So they created a collaborative document and they put the name of the app, what it does and what student population they found it was best for. And so then they continually look at that doc. When they see three that they want, they go to the central computer and they just download them. Right. Yep. You last only asked by one app and it goes to all, they go to all because we haven't made the transition to the volume licensing program, yes, the new volume licensing program leaves it up to the developers. So with our Bretford cart right now, we're able to buy the app once and sync it to 30 devices and we paid for it once. With the new purchasing program, you will have to buy a pack of 30. And it's up to the developers as to how big of a discount they're going to give you on that. So if the app costs $1.99, they might say, if you buy 5 to 10, it only costs you $1.29 per device. You have to buy that app with the new program for each device in the right, district. But, but now, though, like one app only applies to one cart. Yes, absolutely. One one library. Yeah. Yep. Um, technically, just a few things. Um, we did have a district-wide wireless um, put in in, in 08, 09, and that was great. You can still use them without, and many of you probably have like an access point on a cow or an access point that will run these, but you definitely need to have a wireless network of some sort. We now encourage students to bring in their own personal devices. Um, our goal is to get to one-to-one. -one. We can't provide that, so we're trying to, to utilize a variety of devices. So we let them bring in netbooks, laptops, iPods, iPads. Um, a lot of testing and error is, and is really what we did. What well, could have made it more successful? Um, we, we invested a lot of time trying to get the Bretford cart to sync with a PC. We wasted too much time on that. At the time, Apple's website and Bretford's website said, yes, you can sync up to 20 with a PC. And 
since then they've retracted that statement because it is not possible and that's why we went with the MacBook training. You can provide training and it's never enough training, right? Amen, it's just never enough training. So of course, just more and more training. Our struggle right now is we know these are great for kids. You are gonna see how awesome they are in a few minutes and we don't have the money to get them to everyone and that is very frustrating. Clay teaches eighth grade math and, and I believe that if we find a tool that is good for eighth grade math, we should be using it across the board in eighth grade math and we are not. We are using them in one eighth grade math classroom. We need to get that out to all of eighth grade math. So just like you, we have these struggles as well. Um, we're working on improved file sharing so that students can create podcasts and then upload them to our servers and then just trying to get a device no, in the hands of every student. Yep, please do. I was thinking, um, we didn't get any of the cases, just, I mean, in the cart, did we try the case? No, well? we did not. Does anyone in this room? Well, my tech thinks that they'll, they'll work better with a case with less numbers, like with a case. With a PC? With a PC, you mean? Yeah. I think I have heard from other districts that they've been able to sync eight is like the max that I've heard. Does anyone have any experience beyond that? That's what I've heard is that with the PC, they're able to get eight. So, but maybe, I mean, that would be great if that were true. Um, these are just some things we're working on. We're gonna cruise through so we can really get to see iPods in action. Got the video? <laughs> Couple of things. This was my lesson book. Oh, I need that. Oh. This right here is, our, is my math book, okay? That is an exact problem from a pre-algebra 2 class. In the old days, I would have said, all right, here's the exchange rate. We need to go take care of changing 144 and five, uh, 50 hundredths to, uh, uh, Hungarian, to, from Hungarian forints to the wonderful world of U.S. dollars. I would give them the number of the currency, and, and we would set up a proportion. In the new days, this is how we rock and roll with this. We go Google Earth, because me, I have no idea where Hungary is right now. Uh, not a clue. So we're going to find it. Next, Excuse we're going to Excuse me, but didn't you used to teach geography? I did, but. Oh, okay. Wait, we're, no. Yeah. <coughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry. You, you might not be getting a ride home. All right, so now. Wait, wait, I think I got the car. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you oh, yeah, did. Okay. All right. <laughs> did you know so you were into a Wikipedia. comedy act, too? So then we're going to go to Wikipedia, and I get it. Wikipedia is this, that, and the other thing, but you know what? It's a great resource, and there's an app for that. So we're going to go find out some more information about this right here, okay? Because no kid in their right mind knows what a forint is, okay? Then we're going to go to the XE currency app, and there's a 1,000 currency apps. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to go find out right now what the currency is because it could have been different than the day before. So we go and find that out. Then on paper, they're actually figuring it out now, what I've also done is I have an iPod uh, cast, a podcast, where they'll go and see how would I implement a particular proportion. But we've talked about them, but you know as well as I do, is sometimes it takes three hits of the hammer to figure out that your thumb actually hurts. And that's the way it is with math sometimes. It takes more time. So we're going to go ahead and take care of writing the proportion on our pizza paper. But then I'm going to go use the proportion app, and I'm going to have them check it, which is all they have to do is plug the four, three numbers in, hit the little equal sign in the middle, and boom, they have their answer. Then I'm going to say, all right, I need some personal invitation from you. Did you get it? And you go ahead either to the marquee app and give me this really cool thing that you put up here, and it scrolls your answer across, and they can have some smiley faces on and all that good stuff. And then... Or we're going to go to the iResponse app, and there's really two. There's eClicker and there's iResponse, and it gives you a direct feedback of exactly what uh, your response is from the kids. You can break it down, and I'll show you how this works. You can break it down. You can have the kids see the data. You can see the data. You can print it out. You can get it in graphs, whatever. And it also, the iResponse, allows you to create a test and have them bring that in. So craziness, I would have, seriously, in 1995, I would have lectured how to do that. That's not happening with me anymore. I have totally engaged the kids. This did not take any more time, maybe a little bit, but not much. And I believe that our in-depth uh, learning has, has just grown. So that's how I would do that. And I get it. I ran through it fast, but that's the way it is. The iResponse is very similar to what you've seen in Clicker software. How much did that cost? You. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. How much does it cost? The iResponse app, they went to the volume pricing. Before it was 99 cents for one app. They've now went to the volume pricing, and I believe it's 
99 cents times 30 or it's $1.99. I, I can't exactly remember. That changes a lot. If you want a real thing, get the App Shopper app, okay? The App Shopper, and it tells you when these apps go free. Also, freeappalert.com, freeappalert.com. Com. They give about 60 apps a day that go free. Now, through my circle of connection, I found out that if you purchase that on a free day and you document it, you can purchase it 30 times. Okay. Now, until I get told differently, I'm rolling with that. But you got to make sure you document it. But free app alert gives you more than just games. Because there's a couple other ones out there that give you a lot of games, and we're not into that. So those are just a couple of things. Uh, app Shopper app, uh, that's an app, but then freeappalert.com isn't an app, but it's web-based. <laughs> Question. You want to go to the video? Yeah. All right, so yesterday things were rolling, and, and I, I felt really good about what was going on, so just pause it for a second. Mm -hmm. This is my classroom, and this was so cool. So I asked the kids, we did a line, of symmetry, a line of symmetry, and in my math book, it was black words on a white paper, and that doesn't fly with me. So I said to myself, you know, can you, and I've got 14 kids in here that, um, they're challenging, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to put it politically correct. I love them to death, but they're very challenging. So I said, here we go. I need you to come up with pictures of lines of symmetry. They came up with pictures of... Um, faces that go right on top of each other that was perfect and this kid all of a sudden comes up here and he's got this picture and he goes I don't, I don't know which one's the line of symmetry and I go yes because I then produced it to the kids they went to the iResponse app I said which one do you think it is and so forth and so again these are a couple of different footages and if I want to stop and talk about it I'll have her do it but please watch this again is my classroom taken from my iPhone post it up there it's ready to roll we have no video. We have no sign. Sweet. No big deal. We don't have speakers hooked up. Yeah, we do. We do? Mm -hmm. It worked before. We have four Anyways, people this that have my connected. MacBook with the iResponse put on it. Okay, no big deal. That is the correct answer right there. I also told you that I can show the kids their responses aliasly. And so I was asking, do you think it's A, B, or C? And then they were going here. Our response up here. What's kind of neat is that this is all particular, alias, uh, his particular meaning you can't really tell alias. who's who. But so far, we have letter C. We have five people. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Amy, Amy. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry I'm... This is really funny. I was sitting just a little bit ago at a little thing, and um, I am all iPad, iPod, and I touched this woman's screen to get to a link, and it didn't work. So, <laughs> um, but. What I'm looking at is, I show the kids this. It's great because I also can go and find out really which one doesn't get it, and I go over and talk to him. I'm also team teaching in this particular thing, so he can go over and talk to him as well, and it really works nicely. She's going to continue. Now, stop. We did uh, a line of symmetry then. We used the whiteboard app, and now they have to go ahead and take care of this. Do not buy the full whiteboard app. You do not need it. Get the light version. There's nothing in the pro one that you need. Get the free one. So this guy is drawing one. This young man right here does not speak English very well, but he loves that app. So he's going to draw on it, and then he's going to save it to his photos. Okay, And then I'll show you how we get it to places where we can see it. So go ahead. And this is all going on while my team teacher, see, he's thinking about it, okay? And we had a great discussion because that's not a line of symmetry. So we had a great discussion, but he is engaged like at doing a line of symmetry, and it's not just there, on his Kevin. paper. I like how we Kevin actually then took that up to the document camera and, and showed the only kids. Problem and it was great. Is, and okay? I'm gonna find now, this right here is the iResponse app. Can, I, I don't know if you can see it, but at the end, it was really cool. My team teacher took his iPad, and he drew a football, and then... Kids came up and drew the line of symmetry, and then I threw an iResponse app up at the end, and I said, what is the total amount of I, uh, lines of symmetry that you can have in a football? And it was zero, one, two, or more, and that's the question they're answering there. It's really only two in a football, but it was just awesome that my team teacher was rolling with it, and, and that was neat. So they're right now engaged, and I'm getting an idea who really knows what a line of symmetry is. And this is about the third or fourth application. Now, mind you, in the old days, we were looking at black words on a white screen, okay, or a white textbook. Go ahead.
I, oh, I know why I did this. I paused that. There's the iResponse app. I don't know if you know, but if you back scroll in the iPod and you click uh, whatever the app is, it'll search your iPad for whatever it is. And that's what I was trying to tell him. Go ahead. So they just have to log in. It's really simple. They know how to do it. And uh, they click connect, and all of a sudden up comes their particular thing. Now, that's a clicker. 2000 bucks for a regular clicker. I got it for maybe, if, if I have to do volume pricing, I got it for $30. And I also got everything else. And that's why I'm not an e-clicker guy. How many apps do you have on your machine? Uh, as of October of last year, 136. What size? And they have all been used in our classroom. And I, no offense to anybody who is looking. I get somewhat frustrated by the people who are online who are experts, but they're not in the classroom. Okay? I am in the classroom. I am in the trenches. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying every single one of these kids have used and they've been able to use it. And I'll show you how I know that. Go ahead. Continue. This is kids putting it away. And so they're just dropping them in there. I mean, nobody leaves until I uh, let them go. Very simple. There's our 15 on one side. Slam the door shut. On to the next class. And finally, and we don't have, um, see, she just came Just up, she knew she leave. was in the bottom drawer, opened it, closed it. By the way, they only open up once at a time, one at a time. I'm not sure why. Um, and that's it. So I hope, and I apologize for the no, vi no audio there, but I hope that gives you an idea of what we're doing with them in, in our classes. What size I have? Good question. Yeah. Eight gigs is all you need. Here's why. You, and she asked what size you need. There's eight, 16, 120, I don't know what there is. But... Eight is all you need because you can drop and drag whatever you want on there. You bet. And again, I have 136. I also have audios on there. I'm not even close to. Yeah, I do think you need to consider usage, though. I mean, he's primarily using them for apps. A special needs oh, yeah. teacher that might be using a lot of books and downloading a lot of supplementary videos, that, that might be a different case. So I would definitely think about your usage. If you, just, if you just go to Apple's website, they actually give you recommendations. Like for an 8 gig, you can download this many apps, this much music, so you can find those specs. And then uh, I respond. Is it pretty efficient? Like, can you just, as you're teaching, come up with questions and put them in? Yes, ma'am. So you don't have to pre Or, or, you can go and type all of them in there just by clicking on a plus sign, and then you can transmit them to students when you want. So The only limitation is that your oh, yeah. computer and your devices, your iPods, have to be on the same network. So if your computer is hardwired and your devices are on an access point on a wireless network, it won't work. We struggled with that big time. Eventually, we ended up creating a new network and this is where your tech people come in, a new network for just the iPods so that they could talk. And we're, again, trying to help you not experience that frustration. Yes, ma'am. Are you able to the iPods We could. We don't. Yep, we, we physically connect them. We do sometimes Bluetooth to each other using the whiteboard app. So, yes, I, we can, but we don't. How much money you got? <laughs> Seriously, we'll take the highest bidder. Oh, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. We'll share anything. In I don't fact, care. I, I've had it in my, I have two different offices. I've had it in my bag for about four months because I keep telling myself, I'm going to put this all in a wiki. So when we do presentations, we can just share. And I've taken it home with me about 50 times, and I've taken it to both of my offices about that many. So, so what exactly coming. are you looking for? What exactly are you looking for? That if you could you know, get it to Miles Turner, he'd shoot it out to all the different Document that has it listed, no. uh, which apps are good for what. Yep. Oh, the, my goodness. There, yep. There's also, if you search that, there's a Google Doc out there that is all colorful. Anybody ever seen that? And it's all by grade level. And yeah, search Google. It's a really cool tool. Yeah. How do you stay on top of the um, updates? I have no life. Yeah, I mean, that's what it, that's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just continually, right on the bottom, it says updates. There are 12 updates. There's 15 updates, and you click on it, and then it, it'll update them automatically. So you just got to keep, that, that's the thing. There are some people, I'll be honest with you, why don't I get these? Because it's all of it. You get everything. You get searching. You get, how are you going to implement it? You get evaluating. You get everything that goes with these. It's not just getting 30 in your classroom. How long would you say it takes to sync all the Good devices? question. Not long at all. To get one tray of 15, five minutes if I don't have to back up or anything like that, maybe 10 minutes to do one new app.
we got to go with the AI. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right, right. And if, if you had to choose now, would you choose an iTouch or an iPad? Oh, uh, no question, iPad. Yeah, I was just thinking about this. I went to Ty's. Anybody familiar with that? It's the uh, Minnesota technology. We went in 2008, and I spent a half an hour on that and got jacked, and then she uh, fortunately gave me some money and all that kind of stuff. And uh, iPads were, or iPods were it. Now they're not. I mean, now the iPads, but I don't think the feasibility of $500 versus $179 or $189. So would I, I would love an iPad, pads, but iPods are great as well. Okay, so right. now the rest is really just a variety of apps that we will run through. We have 30 for you to use that we will get out and Nobody's let Nobody's leaving the trying. room until we get these back. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you have not one, if you have one, you may have this on there or you could quickly download it, but I, I please uh, try to share them as, a, uh, as all I have. So if you have one, great. As soon as you turn these on, you'll notice the picture that's on there. Whoops, sorry, ma'am. Sue, personal. Anybody else? What are we talking Anyone about? Back here? What, what are listed? Yeah, I got F4. it. Yep. Can you pass one down there? Yeah. There you go. Yep. Anyone else? You bet. Can you just pass these down, please? Anybody else? Last call? Clarence? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right, so I get it. You're going to buzz around and you're going to want to check everything out on that. Real quickly, if you don't know how to turn it on, you push the black button, it should come on. And there's all the apps that we have. I have not taken time to put them in the folders. Some kids have, so you'll notice that. If you want to search for app, you just got to scroll backwards. Um, Need a word that rhymes with no audio. Okay, so listen very carefully. This is Amy and I are going to take turns here. This is one of her favorite apps. These are apps that we use in the classroom, and so you'll be able to check them out. This is Dragon, naturally speaking. If you're familiar with the software, this is an app for it. How do you click back to it? So hang on, I'm just gonna flip back and forth here. Now, how do you get to it if you don't know? Remember, push the screen to the right and you'll get to the point where you're gonna search if that's what you want. Push the screen to the right and you'll get push the screen to the right. Oh, the other right. Kind of yeah. seeing a there mirror there, but okay, with this app, what you do. So, so here's the thing. We're trying to teach you and I get that and you're talking. We're gonna let you play for a minute after we teach you the app. So watch the app and then you'll be able to roll with it. All right, this, every app that we are gonna talk about are on the devices we handed out. So if, he said, if you just flip back and type in Dragon or Dictation, it will just bring you right up to that app. But this would be great for any student, especially students who ha have issues with handwriting. They can record their notes. So I'm gonna tap here. Hello, welcome, hope today is useful. And when I click stop, it's gonna do text to speech, or speech to text. And it will lay out my words for me. If, if it didn't exactly pick up something well, I can click and edit that. Now I have to be honest with you, this is something that I experience right here in my classroom. And so you gotta have a joke or two, but you need to make sure that you uh, understand it's going to, I mean, we don't have all minute to wait. You know, and, and what I mean by that is most people we used to say all day, but it does take a little while for this stuff to process. So there she is. So it didn't exactly come out how I wanted it to. It, it, it's just a word off. I can click and edit that. Then when I'm done with it, I have a few options that I can, here's my little editing, just like regular. Um, I can then email it. Whoops, sorry. What do you have set up to? Testing. Good question. Testing. One, two. When you are a personal, one of the things I struggled with is we do use Google Apps. So we have Pulaski Google. It's all, everything you can think of under Pulaski and Google. So the email aspect, there aren't many because you have to always configure each one. 
so I use something else. So we wouldn't use that for this purpose to email it somewhere because it's challenging, but there's another tool for that. Actually, I have mine synced to my school email. So if I click email right now, it will email out of my school account. So if a kiddo has this, this iPad in their hands right now and they want to dictate um, an answer to a test question or whatever, yep. how do we translate it to you? That, that's, a, that's what I'm saying. If, you, if the kid, if it's his own, great, he emails it. But otherwise, we have multiple kids using this, so they can't do that. But there's a different way to do that. So here are your options. You can email it. You could, you could cut this and paste it into another app or into a Google Doc or whatever that might be. They can post it on Facebook or Twitter. I see some people are experiencing some frustrations. It, it could be a lot of things. It could be the wireless. You're going to have all that set when you bring your own classroom. I have no idea I'm a teacher. I don't know what any of that stuff is above the wall. <laughs> I don't know. The, the app, you mean? No. I, um, let's talk after. I'll tell you our issues with that. I'll go to the next one. Okay. Well, you are playing with that. Maybe you already have, but we'll get the next one up here. This always happens. We run out of time. We want to. We could spend all morning talking about this one. This one is fantastic. All it is, is dictionary.com. But I'm not kidding you. I will have kids go to this. I would never in the old world would have ever had them go to the back of the room or even have a dictionary on their desk and open it up. So here's what's really cool. This app, when you play it, when you go get it, it has a little talking speech on it. So it'll say dictionary. Kids love to push it 18 times, so oh, you got to stop that. Because you don't have a microphone. But it is fantastic, so you may want to try that one. I'm pretty sure that one will work. The, the dragon dictation, if it's not picking up your voice, it's because you don't have a microphone plugged oh, in. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, iPod, smart. That's really a great thing. iPod touches do not have a built-in mic. I was using an iPad and an oh, iPhone cool. have a awesome. built-in mic. So if you're using an iPod touch, you would need a mic. The other thing with dictionary.com, if you go to the bottom, there's a place for thesaurus. A lot of kids don't know what one word means, but if they click on that, it gives them all the other ones. Kids always, always give me those other words, and it's a great discussion because in math, we have to read a lot of stuff that doesn't deal with the numbers, which I don't like, but that's the way it is. So it helps. So that's dictionary.com. If you don't have that one, excellent. All the countries. I'm actually going to show you. You can, if you, if you want to go to all the countries, go for it. It does the same thing. No, just, but I want to show you a different app that, that does app. everything all the countries does yeah, yeah, and more. Awesome. It's called Countries LE. And what it is is you can get, this would be great for social studies. It actually would be great for any content area. But just increase this here. This is the app. And I'm showing it to you on my iPad only because it's a larger space. The apps are the same on the iPod Touch, most of them. But this is, if you go to um, the fact book, you can get information on any country. Yep. This is a slightly different So one, if I go to Australia, same. if you're in all the countries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the countries does just this part of it. It gives you information on the country. This app is all the countries and more because it also has rankings if you're interested in seeing rankings in the world about birth rate or population or anything else you can see all those rankings it also has maps it has continent maps it has a quiz feature so what is this country and you have to be able to know Did you take it'll tell you if you're correct or if you're incorrect yes I don't know. That's, I'm not responsible for her. Yes, all the countries is only the fact book. I don't know. If you, if this you one is social, called so Countries LE. She's not finding. It. Maybe it's just an iPad. Countries LE. So all countries. There's a lot of them out there, but this is fantastic. I did teach one section of social studies last year. Wonderful. What's the next one? I already mentioned this. This is outstanding. This right here is a great way for kids to make stuff. Um, we use it for fraction work, understanding different fraction parts. We use it for whatever else. Uh, there's a lot of things. 
But the point I'm trying to make is as soon as you have it on your screen, does everybody know how to take a picture with these? You click the bottom button and the top button at the same time and it will take a picture and it goes to your photos. Then we use another app to get it out to the web where we can see it. So it's, it's a really, really helpful one. If you ever do want to collaborate, you can join another network and that works very well. Uh, you do have to caution that because kids join when they're not supposed to. Yes, ma'am. Whiteboard works with iPad much better. Oh, yep. Oh, if you take a picture again, you, you find the home button and you find the other button that's on top and you just click one at a time, hold it, and then click the other one, it'll take a picture of what's ever on your screen. Not an actual picture, but a photo of what's on your screen. Yep, and then there's a share version, but again, that needs email, and that's where there becomes, what's that? Yes, yes, but what I'm saying is if I need to get it for the kids, out so I can view it, that's challenging, and I have an app for that's different, so. So, and did you mentioned about being on the same network? Yes, you also have to be on the same network again with this one to work on it. Next one. Next one is oh, color one. splash. For those of you art teachers, be art ready teachers, creative to drool. teachers. Color splash is awesome. Color splash allows you to bring in any picture and make it gray, but bring back the color in any aspect of that photograph. So, like I made this picture gray, and I just brought the color of his fleece back in. So if I go and I bring in an image here, you can bring in any image from your photo gallery. Um, you can actually do that. I put um, a picture of an apple in a hand. And you could go ahead and do that right now on the ones that I've brought. So apple you, in hand. If you open Color Splash and you just click Images and go ahead and find, I'm trying to find an image that would suit itself well. Um, yep, now just click one. Oops, sorry. I'm sure. Syncing it again. Is the sync process get rid of your... For example, that, that X I drew in whiteboard is on. Well, whatever. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm, no, she Gone. shouldn't have. I'm sorry. From I thought the I closing of the you, app and but now you would just it. Unless you that. save it. Do mess around yeah. with the functions. All right, so here I have a picture that is now black and white. I can say I want color, and I'm going to bring back the red of the hat. No, but in April. And if I'm really, really rumored, sloppy, of 2011, they're coming out I can zoom into this. I can go back to my gray yeah, I know. and I can There's fix competition and you can't keep up with anything that I need to. Yeah. Or recolor I it. it. I mean there's if I need to. It's hard. It's hard to keep up, especially in education. You can yeah, save your exists. session if you're not done editing it and come back to it later. You can email it, you can upload it to Facebook, or you could save the image and then it saves right back into your photos. Uh, next one. Yep, but if you just save photo, if you want to get a photo to your devices, you just put a photo. Um, in iTunes, you set the path of where it syncs your photos. So you just put them in that folder, and then when you sync, Can't they will just go. No. Yep. All right, next so, one. Next one. Uh, really like this one. This was the best thing that I've found in the last month. It's Pick Posteris. Or take off the PIC and just use Posteris. There's two apps. Finally, I have found something where kids can make something up to a website. So right now we're using a Simple Mind app, and I'll show that in a moment. They're creating their entire web of all the representations of tables, graphs, equations, and figures. So they're going to take that, they're going to put it into their photos, and then they're going to upload it to their own blog, their own web. No email is needed. And it creates a special URL for it. It's wonderful. And I tried it out on, on myself when I went to the Ties conference this past three days. Absolutely flawless. So Posteris does video, text, and pictures. This I found first. Pick Posteris only does pictures. So I would strongly recommend Posteris. It's wonderful. And I'm unveiling it to the kids on Monday so that they can get that up and running. A if list you, of all these apps are on our presentation, which should be on the, what do they wherever. have for all the handouts for all of this? Yep. So. If you want to see how it looks, you can go to Polkatown USA. Yep, I know. <laughs> PolkatownUSA.posteris.com. You can see what I created, and I did everything on an iPhone, which would also be an iPod. Polkatown USA. 
Here's a great one. Real Director is $3.99. It is Movie Maker on an iPad. On the way up here, I very quickly created this. It you can also me... do it. You can also do it on an iPod. Yep, you can do it on an iPod. It took me five minutes. She made this on the way home in the pass or on the way here on the passenger car seat. Yeah, you can import that, yeah. pictures and video. You can add text. You can add transitions. And then when you're done, you can save it. You can email it. You can post it on Facebook. Real director, R E E L director. It costs $3.99. Um, it is very easy to do. Here's where I put in my title. I can change my font. I can do my credits. Here's my little storyboard. For those of you that know digital video editing, you can bring in a picture, a video. You can record your own sound. You can pull in music from your iTunes library, which is stored on this device. I go here. I pick a picture. I can add as many pictures I want. It puts it in my timeline. I can drag and move them around in any order that I want. And then when I'm done, I can just drag them around. I can cut pieces out. I can add transitions. And then I can go to my music here and I can say, add this song to it. And now I've got a video. And the reason why we're showing you this and also Posteris and a couple other things, one of the big gripes about iPods is you can't create anything. That is not true. You can, you can create anything. Can you put an edit on Real Director? Yes. Yep. Next so, one. That was Real Director. And That's, those are all on there if you want to play with them. This one right here. If you've ever, I, I teach algebra, and if you've ever had to say to a parent, would you please purchase a $130 graphing calculator? Now, this right here does everything I've had to have it do in Algebra 1, okay? I will tell you this, there's a teacher in Green Bay that did her master's on whether this would work for higher level, and she did find a few challenges. However, this is phenomenal. We used it yesterday, and it basically allows you to Go ahead and graph up to four particular uh, equations. And what I like about it, it gives you color. So you just go into graphing equations. You go ahead and take care of, we had yesterday 4x plus 2. No lie, those are the ones we had. And 4x plus 1. Um, they're all going to show up on here. I can have a table. You can set this to whatever, whatever configuration you want. You can go to graph. You can find out the solution to the equation. It's all right there. You can take a picture of this by going like this, and then the kids can upload it to me. Um, it's phenomenal. <laughs> 99 cents. Okay. Now, granted, it's going to be 30 bucks if I put them on all 30 of them, but it's certainly a far cry from $130. Um, we're down there are, by the way, there are, by the way, 10 different kind that you could get out there. I chose Graph Calc. We are down to the last few minutes, so I want to show you just a, really, a couple others. I'm just going to just do this real quickly because I think it's important that you understand all that's possible with this device. As many of us are teaching keyboarding and, and finding programs for that, I want you to see how easy for us getting into a lab to do keyboarding across the whole grade level is very difficult. So now I have a keyboarding app here, which I'm going to probably do really bad at because but it is just a game, it's a race car. As fast as you type, is the faster you can pull ahead. Um, there are also time typing tests. Now so granted, it's not maybe this, but there's a lot of challenges out there that are we ever gonna do this again? So and you gotta I, weigh that, that's something different. We're just trying to show yeah. you what there is. And what I would say with that is, know. it's you get yourself keyboards, oh. and What's then you called, actually Amy? teach. What's that called? This one is called TurboType. TurboType. But, um, typing tests will actually give you um, an assessment with that. I want, for some of you books, um, primary teachers in here, I just want to show you a couple things. These Millie Molly is, there's probably 20 different books. This is an actual book. It's called Millie Molly. But I need you to see how it takes it above and beyond just reading a book to students. Turn. So students can yeah. have one Hello. word read to them at a time, or they can have the whole thing read to them. I recorded. It will read the whole book to them, but then it takes it one step further, and I have not seen any other books that do this, is that once they've had the book read to them, students can actually go here and record their own voice reading the book, which is great for fluency. Um, no, it's on the, you just need a mic then with the iPod too. Yep. 
Millie Molly. Millie Molly, and there's like a whole bunch. Millie Molly go camping. There's there's a bunch of them. And then last one that I just want to mention again for for primary teachers is for um, handwriting. <laughs> there are so many apps that students can just um, go in and and hear, pick a sound. There's another one called showing, Better Letters. This one is showing you how to write it, and you can't hear it, but it's actually saying the sound to you. This one is uh, ABC Pocket Phonics, or it's saying the sound I, and you have to say what it is. <laughs> saying the sound N, mm, and you have to say what it is. So I think our point in all of this is that there are so many apps. Literally, it's a joke. There's an app for that. But it, it is true. There is an app. There are apps to start your car. I mean, there are apps for everything. So the question that we, the answer that I want to leave you with is, how do you find these instead of coming to a session and learning about them? We did a lot of searching. If you go to iTunes and type in free, if, 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 if cost is a thing for you, you get all the ones that are free. But we did a lot of Google searches. Best apps for math best apps for fluency and you will people don't recreate the wheel like when she asked about sharing our document you will find a ton of documents online of people doing exactly what we did where they say the app and what it's good for and they rate it I, so you just have to do a really good Google search and you will find um, you can also go to iTunes and just choose a category of math and you'll get just the math apps Can I just show you one other thing here uh, this is a website I created that I have all the different things here's the list of the 99 apps that I used at the end of the classroom uh, last year, here is the actual list of the uh, 136 apps. It's recess duty. I hate recess duty, so I made something that makes me happy. So when I'm out there, it's 32, 25 degrees. Makes me I think about good things. Here's another thing over here that you can look at: uh, essential implementation of iPod touches. But some people wanted that list over in the right-hand corner. Ah, <sighs> we gave you a lot. I get yes. it. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you felt it was beneficial. Now, so, nobody's moving until I get those iPods. And good luck to you as you explore and take this further. I'll stand at the door and collect those.